becoming more and more obvious that the issue, the major issue is simply this. This is not immigration. This is invasion. The pathetic excuse of the entity in the White House when he said that, uh, you know, ISIS was contained and then boom, and then the other statement that he made through his press conference in Turkey should be absolute, a declaration that he is overseeing and allowing the Islamic invasion of the United States and basically funding it in other parts of the world. You know, that's what Vladimir Putin, Putin spoke the most telling and compelling statement when he said, look what you have done. But I don't think people understand this is not by accident. And this is not by someone who is so removed from reality. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows that there must be a war that has to take place for Islamic eschatology to be, to be fulfilled, a global nuclear war. You remember you and I did a show together when Ahmadinejad made the statement that for the sake of the return of the Mahdi, it would be beneficial for 54 million Iranians if they had to die to bring it about. Well, he got thrown out because there must have been more than one who said, we don't want this guy president anymore. But the point is, is that with Balalay and uh, McElhenry and others, uh, calling now saying something's wrong. We have a constitutional definition of treason, aiding and abetting a sworn enemy of the United States. We have denial upon denial upon denial. But, Alex, I propose to you that all the weapons you and I have talked about, all of the ammunition that has been purchased has been uh, secreted away in different places throughout the United States and will be for the invading army to acquire. I think, Alex, we are under invasion. This is not immigration. And the, uh, the threats of ISIS... And let's just face it, you and I have talked so many years that terrorism is nothing more than an extension of someone's foreign policy, in this case the terrorists, and the overthrow of the old world order. We've heard it from George Bush ad nauseum. And the point being now is we're seeing the implementation. And unfortunately, uh, with the veterans being killed off, 350,000 plus denial of medical services, etc., since Obama came to office, now 900,000 plus veterans waiting. It's got to be obvious to everybody that we're seeing the uh, decimation of the U.S. military. We're seeing the, if you will, throwing uh, the Americans under the bus, and it's a war. It's civil war. Uh, when you see that the statements out of Obama, look, you don't need to make anything up. You don't need to go in long, uh, long-winded television network, not that you do, but the television networks, they're trying to figure everything out, and it's so obvious. And one of the things about people is, is that they're so numbed and dumbed down to reality, they can't get out of their entertainment, if you will, uh, 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 paradigm and come to reality knowing that this is the beginning of the end. As governor of the state of Texas, I will not roll the dice and take the risk on allowing a few refugees in uh, simply uh, to expose Texans to that danger. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which I've never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. In the wake of the terror in Paris, President Obama is blatantly disregarding the very real concerns of the American people. Rather than review the policy to bring in 10,000 Syrian refugees after the horror the world witnessed just five days ago, Obama clutches like a madman to his power and stays the course on the Bilderberg-fueled globalist demand that he oust President Bashir al-Assad from Syria. Rather than do whatever it takes to protect the United States, Obama is leaving the gates wide open as he shuns the overwhelming concerns of Americans and aids an invading force to quietly enter the United States. People are flooding social media to encourage Americans to call their congressional representatives to stop the resettlement of Middle Eastern migrants after government officials and contractors admitted the migrants cannot be tracked or vetted properly. Nearly 80% of states receiving the most migrants have GOP upper house majorities. Of the 19 states that took in the most refugees per capita in 2013 and 2014, 15 have upper house legislatures dominated by Republicans. In comparison, only three of the 19 states are Democratic. The FBI has already admitted the U.S. can't vet all the migrants for terror ties. We can only query against that which we have collected. And, and so if someone has never made a ripple in the pond in Syria in a way that would get their identity or their interests reflected in our database, we can query our database till the cows come home, but we're, we're not going to We'll, there'll be nothing show up because we have no record on it. You can only query what, what you've collected. And, and with respect to Iraqi refugees, we had far more in our databases because of our country's work there uh, for a decade. This is a different situation. In the case of Where Syria, the there's, you can't go to the, the uh, government offices in that country. They're in disarray. You can't go interview people who know people who are applying for this status. Um, do you disagree with the FBI director uh, when he says that uh, uh, vetting uh, uh, Syrian refugees is extremely difficult, if not impossible? 
Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure he said it was impossible. Certainly, the, the, uh, not only the Department of Justice, but all of our agencies will make every effort to vet every refugee coming into this country, from the databases to the interviews that those individuals are subject to, to the biometric screening as well. Let me go on. Certainly, there are challenges to that process because of the situation in Syria. Recently, a Syrian migrant who was relocated to Louisiana went missing. The group accommodating him admitted it doesn't track the migrants. The LA Times is reporting that more than half the country's governors, citing security concerns, said they would refuse Syrian refugees. And those Syrian refugees are all headed not to the big cities, but to the small towns of Main Street America, while ISIS calls for attacks on Washington, D.C and ramps up the possibility of a terror attack on one of the many cities found on the ISIS kill list. John Bound for Infowars.com Paul Watson, I'm going to give you the floor here uh, to really break down your observations. First, what you saw today. I appreciate you and uh, the courage of you and Biggs and Zimmerman. And then walk through uh, other things you've uh, witnessed since you were on with us. 23 hours ago yesterday. Well, yeah, obviously, as Big said today, we visited Molenbeek, which is known as the jihadist capital of Europe. It's one of these Muslim no-go ghettos that the left pretends doesn't, doesn't exist. Remember, Steve Emerson went on Fox News after Charlie Hebdo and blamed some of these radicalized no-go Muslim ghettos for recruiting some of the attackers involved in that incident. The left laughed him off. The mayor of Paris tried to sue Fox News for those comments. And they basically, for the next 10 months, pretended that these areas don't exist. They do exist. We've just been in one. And again, they've earned the reputation for being a no-go zone. Because as Big said, we were, you know, flipped the bird, screamed at by these uh, young Muslims in this car. They followed us. Then we went uh, to try and get something in a, in a bar kind of restaurant place. And from what I could tell, the guy was talking French. He was basically saying white people aren't around, allowed in restaurants in this area. So our white privilege didn't count for much. Um, but I'm racist for criticizing the religion of Islam. But they've got segregation in these Muslim no-go ghettos. So yes, they do exist. We've been in one. And as Big said, this was where the guy, the eighth attacker, who is still on the loose in Belgium, they haven't caught him, he was picked up at around 5 a.m., uh, just a, a couple of blocks away from the uh, theater siege, driven all the way back from Paris to Brussels to this very area where this raid occurred. There are no police there whatsoever. We didn't see one police officer. Maybe there was a van driving through once. Other than that, absolutely nothing. So they don't want to patrol these areas because they're not welcome. And obviously, anybody white is not welcome. And that was made clear to us. So we had to get out of there. But that's Molenbeek. That's the, the jihadist capital of Europe. And of course, it's not just the Paris attack in which, you know, the jihadists came out of that area. The Thais train attack back in uh, August, of course, you remember it was derailed by the U.S. military service personnel. He came from Molenbeek, Belgium, the Jewish museum bomber here in Brussels. Last year, he opened fire with a Kalashnikov rifle again, like the train, bomb, like the train attacker. Uh, he lived in Molenbeek. That's why they all come from here. Of course, Belgium has the highest proportion of jihadists being sent to Syria out of the whole of Europe. And if you look on Twitter, on my um, Twitter account today, I posted the fact that the most number of pro-ISIS tweets expressing sympathy towards ISIS, number three on that list is Belgium, way above the likes of Turkey, way above the likes of Saudi Arabia. So there's a huge pro-ISIS sympathy here, and it's concentrated in these Muslim no-go ghetto areas like uh, Molenbeek, the Madrid train bombings back in 2004. One of the men behind the attack was from Molenbeek. Surprise, surprise. And there are other attacks as well. Of course, the, the mastermind behind the Paris attack, who is currently based in Syria, he came from Molenbeek, as did uh, one of the actual assailants who is still on the loose. So this is a, an area with 30, 40 percent unemployment rate. Um, they call it the capital of political Islam in uh, continental Europe. That's according to Belgium's interior minister. And what's interesting is that even though Belgium is quite a left-wing country, obviously quite tolerant of intolerance, 
uh, the Belgian prime minister came out yesterday and said, almost every time an Islamic terrorist atrocity occurs, there is a link with Molenbeek. He went on to say, we have tried prevention. Now 